Hello, this is Victor. I'm here with the second uh, Age of Sigma Battle Report from the a small tournament that we did last weekend in the Games Workshop store of uh, Brussels. And this time, yeah, we still will play our Bretonian Wood Elf Armies against Tom Kings and Beastmen. Beastmen with some River Trolls. So let's make first a loot on, on the list. Remember that first of all um, there were some special rules, some house rules in this in, in this tournament. All the turns are alternative, so you never roll. So the one that is starting is always the first in each turn. Uh, the shooting is limited, so you cannot shoot uh, into a close combat unless you are in this close combat. So and then you can shoot the unit that is attacking you. Uh, your own miniatures are blocking line of sight unless you are um, how it's called this, a, a war machine or a monster then you can shoot over your troops and the, um, the unbind for spells is uh, unlimited in, in distance so you can unbind from any distance so this is changing a little bit the, the rules uh, but this is the whole rules that they, they applied in this tournament. So let's start with Bretonia, just remain low on lane core, 9 real knights, 3 pegasus knights, 5 real knights with the upgrades that you see on the screen, tumpetir banner and champion, champion tumpetir and banner. On the wood elf we have a glade lord, a sorcerer, 5 glade riders, 5 glade riders, 10 way watchers and 10 way watchers. The way watchers have, I think all the units have the champion in. Tom Kings, this is one of our opponents. We have Setra itself on the battlefield. Then Setra have two Lich Priests on a Steed, uh, three Necropolis Knights, and three Skeleton Chariots. And then the Beastman have the Beast Lord. Uh, one great, uh, great shaman, uh, one gorgon, three river trolls, and 16 gores. And we go into the deployment. This time I don't need diagram. I think I make enough pictures to avoid the diagram. So here we go to the deployment. As you can see, we did a long battle line. So we use, again, and remember that this tournament is playing 4x4 four four tables. So we did, and we decided to deploy it in a long line. Uh, in both sides, we have Glade Riders. We have the Way Watchers in the middle to the left. Um, one, the Pegasus Knights in our right flank, the mm, Low and Lane Core in the left flank, and the Real Knights and the Real Knights in the middle. Uh, our opponents decide to cast almost everything on our left flank or the right flank. So they cast everything on the top corner that you can see on the picture. Here another picture of the battle. So you see the, we decide to do a long line and they cast almost everything in one side of the board. Uh, our mindset here is let's try to shoot. They don't have any shooting unit. So let's try to shoot as max as possible and use our mobility to try to outflank them. So I will try to, to see if I can use the Pegasus to try to hunt the, the different sorcerers that are at and th that they bring into the battle. So the, here is the another picture of the battle line on the last close up. Okay, you see that they deploy the river trolls on the top of the hills. All the, the the two lich the two lich and and the lich priest and and the shaman are on the hill as well next to the tower because this tower is giving plus one to spell and then we have the gores there next to the hill and setra is also in that in next to the gores and on the hill and only in the in the the ones in more centered are the Tom Knights. I think they are the Tom Knights. Are the ones that goes in, in, on top of these Gian snakes. So they had the initiative and they decide that we have to start. So they give us our first turn. So we move not too much, just to be in range for our archers to be able to 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 shoot. 
except one unit of Weight Watchers that were too far even to shoot on the first turn. Uh, we would move almost everything to the range of 20 inches, just barely in range to shoot. Uh, I try to move and center my knights in the middle of the battle, just to counter uh, uh, charge. And yeah, and you see in the right flank my Pegasus and trying to do a flanking movement. Here you see the flanking movement. I, w I was very conservative with low and line core and just the Glade Riders are in range for the shooting. Another picture of our movement in the shooting phase. Uh, I think we scratched some wounds on the Gorgon and not much to say. So we go into the turn one for the Tomkins and Beastman. Uh, yeah, and here is the in that side, and the, the I think they are the the Tom Knights. Correct me if I'm wrong. These are the guys that go on top of a big snakes. So uh, they just I will call them Tom Knights for for this um, battle. Uh, they move and they need a, I think it was an eight or nine to charge and they made the charge into the Glade Riders in that side. So this is not a very good news because the Glade Riders don't have any opportunity against these guys. And then on the other flank, I didn't know that Setra can double the movement of one of the units of the Tomkins. He decided to double his own movement. So Setra itself moved 20, just uh, 3 inches away from the Glade Riders and then had a very easy charge on the Glade Riders. The Trolls and the Gorgon just ran, so they were not able to charge because they, they decided to run in the in the turn. And the Chariots and the Gors, and together with the Gore Hero, the Gore Lord, are in the middle of the battlefield. So, uh, yeah, here another overview after the charges. And yeah, you don't have the picture, but you have to assume that the both units of Glade Riders were eliminated after the combat. So we go into the turn 2 for um, Bretonia and Wood Elves and I decide to back up with my knights. Uh, he is better, uh, he has, is partially on, on the terrain so they are quite strong. I was not sure that I, my knights can deal with this um, Tom Knight so I decide to back up them into the forest. Maybe it was a mistake because don't know the Wig Watchers are very exposed and we will see if the Wig Watchers can do some damage with the shooting. Uh, as you can see the Pegasus just fly to the backward of our opponents so in next turn they will be in range. So I, I, I just move and run just to ensure that in next turn I can I, I will be able to, to charge the the diff, uh, some of the sorcerers. This is another picture of this flank where I back up with the knights and then I would move the way watchers to shoot everything onto the uh, tom knight. Uh, on the other side this picture is not very clear but I move the real knights to charge uh, in range to be able to charge the chariots or the gores and low on lane core I decide to fly at the backup and try to charge the Gorgon. I will avoid for this turn the Setra and I will go for the Gorgon first. Here another overview of the battlefield. And this, yeah, sorry, here is after the shooting we kill one of the Tom Knights but what I didn't know is that they have an icon that they can regrow one at the next hero phase so it's been quite a waste of shooting. So low and lane core, roll for the distance of the charge. It was too short to charge the thing was one of the Lich Priest. So I decided to charge the Gorgon and I killed the Gorgon in just one round of combat. This is another picture, another overview of the battlefield. And here yeah, another picture of the battlefield. We go into the Tom 2 for the Tom Kings and Beastman. As expected, the Tom Knights just move here in, in the hall that we have there in front of the Wig Watchers and the Knights. And Setra and the Trolls, the River Trolls that were next to Setra, just move next to Lower Lane Core, three inches away, to be able to charge 
in the charge phase. Ah, I forgot to mention, in the middle of the battlefield, between the shooting and the knight's attack, I almost kill all the gore's unit. And I think I, I kill one chariot, but they also regrow, so it's not a big deal for the Tom Kings. So here um, is an, another close-up. You see low online core surrounded by the river falls and set by itself and at the bottom of the picture the Gwial Knights fighting with the chariots and the Bisman. Uh, and here we see the Tom Knights just next to the Way Watchers ready to charge. They are three inches away of everything. And yeah. Also the the chief or the, the how it's called is the Bis Bisman Lord is um, he moved three inches just to be able to charge to the Gwiel Knights. Another overview of the battlefield before the charges. They don't have shooting and then they charge at the end. The the Tom mm, Knights decide to, to charge on the Way Watchers. So the Way Watchers are engaged in combat. Here I see we did a mistake because also at this moment the sorcerer is, is engaged in combat because it's too close to the to the Tom Knights, although they didn't want to charge on the sorcerer. And here was expected the Setra and the Trolls uh, charge and low on line core. Setra attack first. They decide to do the first attack with Setra, and he he did five wounds. To low one line core, so low one line core managed to survive the attacks from Setra. Uh, here is the middle of the battlefield where my Gwiel Knights I fi are fighting the Gores, the Chariots, and the Gore Lord or the Beastman Gore Lord. And here are the the different this guy, this guy in closest to the picture is one of the Lich Priests. And the shaman of the beastman is next to the tower at the bottom, and then the other one, and more at the bottom, is another lich priest. And more pictures of the uh, tom knights assaulting the way watchers. Here another one. And yeah, you see here the big void in the on the picture. Uh, Low one core killed Setra and then Setra did six wounds with the curse curse um low one core with six wounds killing him also. So yeah, I killed Setra, so low one core in this uh, in this two in this battle killed a Gorgon and Setra and then he died because of the curse um from Setra. When um, Setra dies is give is um, making you D6 mortal wounds. And here, the, the Way Watchers barely survive to the Tom Knights. Three Way Watchers survive, so they are engaged in combat. And the Gwiel Knights kill all the Gores, and I think I, do, I don't lose any Gwiel Knight. I was lucky this time with my armor save, so I didn't lose, uh, I didn't lose any uh, Gwiel Knight. And we go into the turn three for Bretonia and Wood Elves. So, yeah, I mistake. So the Way Watchers were killed at the end uh, after the Battle Shock. So now the the Wood Elves, uh, yeah, the the other unit of Way Watchers just look at the oh, well uh, facing the the Tom Knights. To be able to charge, and I move my knights out of the forest to charge the Tom Knights as well. Here, a close up picture. And here is after the charge. So the Tom Knights uh, are charged by my real knights, my knights of the realm, and by the Way Watchers. And the Pegasus at the bottom of the picture managed to charge one of the uh, Lich Priest. Uh, here is after the, the different charges. You see, my real knights now are very uh, are quite damaged. The the Beastman Lord is doing a lot of damage on my real knight. 
and here we have the lich priest uh, assaulted by the by the Pegasus knights. Here another picture of the big combat between the real knights of the realm, the way watchers, and the tom knight. Uh, yeah, in the attacks, uh, I think I did first and the attacks with my uh, yeah, I did first attack with my knights. I killed some of the I killed two of the Tom Knights. Then the Tom Knights attacked the Way Watchers. He did a, a lot of wounds on them, and yeah, this is what happened. Only four um, Wood Elves surviving after that, and one so after the combat, four Elves surviving, and one Tom Knight. Here we see after the that I think the. Yeah, this is the, the combat. I think I decided to attack first with the real knights because they were going, they were ne close to die, and this was maybe a mistake. I should have attacked first with my knights of the real on, on these guys. So at the end, my real knights are killed by the Bisman Lord, and I didn't manage to do a single wound to him. And yeah, and at the bottom is not appearing, but the Pegasus Knights kill the the Lich Priest. So I, uh, we kill one Lich Priest, we do a lot of damage on the Tom Knights, and yeah, and in return uh, I lost the Grill Knights and a lot of Way Watchers. So in the turn three, the Tom Kings and and the Beastman just the chariot no free. Of the real knights move ahead and also the beastman lord also move following the chariots and the rebel trolls keep moving back to assault the pegasus knights uh, the shaman this, uh, at this point roll to summon a monster and he summon another gorgon so yeah this was doing looking no very grim for the um, Wood Elf Bretonia uh, Alliance because now with this Gorgon and yeah and the Pegasus are surrounded completely by these monsters and if the Rebel and Trolls just manage to assault I think I I don't think the the Pegasus will be able to survive. Here close a picture uh, how he has summoned the Gorgon. Again, with the icon, he regrows one of the Tom Knights. We do all the attacks. I think they kill some Way Watchers. I did uh, here. Uh, no, here I think I still don't do the attacks. This is how it's looking like. Only two Way Watchers alive. Here, uh, the chariots in the middle assault the Glade Lord. And after the combat, oh, they kill the Way Watchers, I think, first, and then I kill uh, one of the Tom Knights that have the icon, if I'm not wrong. So here is the combat. The Gorgon didn't manage to assault. He failed the assault, but the, troll, the River Trolls do the assault on the, on the Pegasus Knights, and they kill one of the Pegasus Knights. Here are more pictures on the assault. Yeah, it's looking like. Yeah, and I think I killed the. The I I didn't manage to kill uh, any of the Tom Knights. I was very unlucky with attacks, so uh, yeah, I I didn't manage to do big da damage on the Tom Knights, and this was a missed opportunity. Because now we go into the Bretonia and Wood Elf Tom Four. Uh, nothing to do. My two units, our two units are engaged, and we just move the sorcerer um, into the forest, try to hide as much as possible. We were hesitating if moving the Glade Lord out of the combat with the chariots, because at the beginning they they told us that they, he can still shoot. Then they t um, we, uh, we read the rules and we detect that he cannot shoot. Uh, um, shot. So at the end, my colleague decided to keep. The Glade Lord in combat. So you can see the Glade Lord remains in combat, managed to kill one chariot. 
between the shooting and, and the close combat, I managed to kill the Tom Knight with the icon. So it seems that these knights are doing some job. And we go into the turn four and last turn for the Tom Kings and the Beastman. At the end, the, the Glaylord was killed by the chariots, so he did not survive, although he did some wounds. And yeah. And my Pegasus Knights were surviving. I think I was only surviving one, with one of the Pegasus Knights, and I managed only to do some two wounds on the on the twelve or something like that. But now we go into the Tom Four for the Tom Knights and the Beastman. The chariots move there to assault the sorcerer, and then the Lich Man summon again the Icon, and then the Icon summon another Tom Knight. So all the Tom Knights we kill are revolved again. What is really very discouraging. So all the war that we and the Knights were doing for and doing the whole battle are useless because the the, the two Tom Knights are back. Here we see how the two Tom Knights are back and then the Beastman Lord is also running to assault on the Knights of the Realm. I have to say this night I was quite surprised with the Knights of the Realm. They are quite resilient and they are performing quite well in two battles. They are not very they are not killing a lot, but they are quite resilient and are resisting quite well uh, hard close combat. And there at the bottom now the Gorgon can move, move close to my uh, Pegasus, so my Pegasus is completely surrounded by monsters and I don't expect long future for him. Uh, and yeah, at the end of the battle, you see the Gorgon at the bottom of the picture, and the Gorgon and the River Twelves finish the work with the Pegasus killing him, the Chariots kill the Sorcerer, uh, and then in the middle of the battlefield, I think the, the, the Beastman Lord also charge. Here we have no, this is not the charge end. So another close up of the charge. But at the end, yeah, he charged here. He killed some knights, but my knights uh, stay in combat because uh, in the in the previous hero phase, the the sorcerer who was our general give them uh, immune. Uh, they are immune to battle shock, so they remain there in combat. Although they had big losses at the end of the battle, they stick there. So the only survivors are some of my knights of the realm. And here we see how the, the river falls and the Gorgon finish the work with the knights. And yeah, and this is at the end of the battle. I think I have nine, uh, five knights of the knights of the realm surviving. Another close up of the the battle. So at the end, victory from the Tom Knights and the Beastman. I have to say it's quite discouraging these units that regrowth, especially when we're talking about monsters with five wounds or miniatures with five wounds. I think we made the mistake not to do all the damage in one turn. So this is a lesson for the next battle. Uh, when you fight this type of units, you should do all the damage in one turn and try to kill them in one at once to avoid that they can grow again. Very happy again with Lowen Linkor, it killed one Gorgon and etc. So it did double of the wounds that um, that the cost and uh, that his cost. And the Pegasus Knights at the end, uh, yeah, they were catch by the River Falls. It's a pity because if they were able to to kill another uh, uh, sorcerer or, or the shaman or the leech, it was being yeah, it will be a good. Uh, exchange, but at the end, only being able to kill one of the lich priests was not the best exchange. I think we all, uh, yeah, we did some mistakes and also very strong uh, Tom Knight, Tom King's army. So that's all. Uh, quite interesting this uh, mini tournament of two games because we were not too many people. Uh, I enjoy really uh, my first games on on Age of Sigmar. So yeah, I'm very happy how the Bretonians um, behave on the battlefield. So that's all. 
Thanks a lot for watching. Please leave your comments below. And see you again later. Bye.